Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I am making over this bedroom. This is my son's bedroom and it is also used as a guest bedroom when we have family come in from out of town. When we first moved in, it was a storage area mostly for a few months. My son is too young to sleep alone in this room because it is um, by stairs and I don't think that he's ready to be in a bedroom overnight next to stairs. <laughs> So we do use it as his like playroom and as a guest room mostly now, but for a long time we just stored all of this random stuff <laughs> in here. You know when you first move into a house, you kind of like have an area where all the stuff you're not ready to unpack goes. That was what this room was and that is what all this stuff was and I need to get all of this sorted out before I can do any kind of DIYs to make this room any better. I wanted to start by clearing off the bed so that way I can get the mattress put on there. I believe I bought this mattress at Walmart. It's just one of those cheap memory foam ones. I figure when he gets older, we can get him something a little more supportive and we do not have guests very, very often. Plus we were on a budget for this makeover. So we got the best mattress that we could in the price range that we wanted to spend. And the bed frame itself was from Facebook Marketplace, and I believe I spent about $100 on it, and it is from the 1800s. It's an Eastlake, and you guys know I love Eastlake so, so much. While that mattress is inflating, I will give you guys a look at the furniture projects that are going to be happening in this room. I bought a set of two dressers, this tall boy one, as well as the wide set one with the mirror on top off of Facebook Marketplace. I think I spent around 200 bucks for it on Facebook Marketplace. It had good bones, but it had some weird things on there and scratches and I decided that it would be best if I updated these with paint and then my uncle who has passed away had this table and it was perfect for the set so my aunt very caringly gave that to me for my son's bedroom and I think that's a great way for him to be connected. The paint color that I'm going with on this set is going to be a gray blue color. I have this color all throughout my house and my son wanted blue for his room so I thought that would be great to add that color into his room and it's also something that he enjoys. My oldest daughter started um, helping me out with furniture flips lately and she was interested in helping me with this one so I definitely wanted to encourage her as much as possible. It's such a wonderful skill to pass on to your children. We took all of the furniture pieces outside to my backyard so that we can start prepping it and painting it and you can see the condition of all the pieces here. Of course, Piper is always right nearby. I can't do anything without her being right under my feet. She is my shadow. But this dresser had overspray on it. It had huge scratches in it. It had a lot of parts of the finish on the top that were just ruined. Like it was like sanded through randomly on that little spot in the corner and then just weird gunk stuck on it. Lots of scratches. This piece was a really good candidate for painting. I adore this style of furniture and I love how it looks painted. It's one of my favorite things. Um, as far as home decor goes, is this style. I love that handle style. I don't know what it's called. If you know what it's called, please let me know. But this style in general is really my favorite style of furniture, like other than Eastlake, of course. <laughs> the nightstand had some condition issues as well, and the top was a Formica type top. It wasn't wood. It just needed to be glued back down, and I had all the supplies to do that, and that was easier than replacing anything or taking that off because you don't know the condition of what's underneath it. The handles were different than the dressers, but similar enough to where when they're not next to each other, it does look like a matching set. And I loved that. And my uncle is very special to me. So I love the fact that I get to have something of his in my son's room. I'm going to be using super glue to glue that for my top back down. I, I use Starbond all the time whenever I use super glue and I can drop you guys a link down below, although I am not sponsored. I'm going to spray this accelerator in there and then use the super glue right after that and it dries almost instantly on contact, which is a huge time saver for me. And once that is done and drying, I can start working on getting all the pieces sprayed with shellac because these are all mahogany. Shellac is a very important step in painting anything that is mahogany because the color of the wood will come through any paint that you put on there. And it's funny because a lot of times 
uh, when you're painting, the tannins don't start coming through the paint until you put the clear coat on. So you'll be going about your project thinking, wow, these two coats I've already put on this piece have really covered all the wood. It's looking amazing. And then you put that clear coat on and then boom, big, huge red stains come through and ruin the entire piece. Then you're going to have to go through and do these steps again anyways. And you would have just wasted all that time and product because you didn't seal in all of that wood tannin. So make sure that if you are painting something that is mahogany, use something like a, a Ben Zinser or just straight up shellac like this is to prime it first because it will hold in all that stuff. For the top that's Formica, I'm going to be painting it with slick stick and I'm doing this because this Formica has like the slickest surface you can possibly have. That's why people used it back in the day because it was such a uh, strong and slick surface that nothing could stick to or stain or ruin in any way, but it makes it hard to paint. The paint I'm going to turn into chalk paint and I'm using this product called Chalk Teak. I had never used it before and I was adding it to latex paint that I got, I believe from Home Depot or Lowe's for my paint color. I'm gonna see if I can find this on Amazon and link it for you down below in my description box in my Amazon store. As I was mixing it, I made sure to um, keep it the right consistency as far as thickness goes. The paint was already pretty thick, so I just added some hot water to it to help thin it out and make it more smooth uh, for the application. If you are new to my channel, you may not know why I'm starting my piece upside down. And I just want to mention that I have learned over time and through experience that it's always best to start a piece upside down. This way you're not going to miss any spots that you wouldn't see had the piece been right side up. It also makes it to be an easier mess free sort of thing to where I can paint indoors and not get paint all over the floor or wherever it is that I'm painting. So when you paint upside down and then let it dry, you can sit it right side up and then paint the top instead of trying to paint the bottom of it while it's touching the floor. It really makes a difference in making a mess and also getting a really good coverage on the bottom to where you're not competing with the ground while you're trying to cover the feet of a piece. All of these pieces took me several days to get painted and several coats. So when you see how fast this goes on the video, it's actually a much more time consuming process, but I love seeing a quick before and after. So I'm gonna speed this up for you guys so that it's much more satisfying. Now that the paint is all finished, I brought the dresser back upstairs to the bedroom and I am going to put the handles back on. For my son, I wanted a more industrial look so I am not going to be repolishing these handles in any way. I'm going to keep the patina on them just the way that they are. Something else that needed to be done was replacing this fan. You can see it wobble in that short video there and that little ka -chick, ka -chick, ka -chick, ka -chick sound just drives me insane. I don't know if you feel the same way that I do about it, but a noisy ceiling fan is the worst. I would never be able to sleep in a room that had a ceiling fan that made any kind of noise. Plus you kind of have this anxiety like, oh my gosh, is the fan going to fall on me in the middle of the night? And living in the South, I mean, ceiling fans are very vital as far as climate control in your house just because of the humidity that air needs to be constantly moving even if it's not that hot out the fan i replaced it with was very cheap from walmart but also really nice looking looked very similar just pure white the next step is going to be 
installing these really neat industrial lights that my husband bought a very long time ago at an antique mall. There's a guy who custom makes lights like this and his lights might even be in antique malls in the city that you're in because I know that he has them all across the nation and I thought that these would be perfect for my son's room because he loves building things he loves knowing how things work it just everything building learning experimenting plus it goes along really well with the antique headboard here I feel like it gives it a much more masculine look to it as far as decorating the room goes, I'm going to be hanging some of these little truck wooden wall decor pieces. I got them from Hobby Lobby. They were really, really cheap. I think they were less than $10 a piece. And I'm sticking them on with command strips because I know that he's not always going to love little trucks and heavy equipment on the wall in his bedroom. So I want to make sure it's something we can easily take down as he gets older. I also brought in his toy box that I made for him a while ago. Let's take a look back at how this room was when we first started and see it how it looks now. What a huge transformation. I didn't have to do any kind of painting in this room as far as the walls go, so that was a huge time saver, but painting all of these different pieces to the same color made them look like a perfect matching set. I even added a trunk to the base of his bed in the same color. He was ecstatic. I don't like to put my kids on YouTube, so I didn't film his reaction to the room, but he was so excited seeing his big boy room. He tells me all the time, I want to go play in my room. It's really the first time he's ever had something that is just his, and I think as he grows older, this room is going to definitely mature with him, and it also functions as a really nice guest room. It's very peaceful. It gets a lot of good uh, natural light in the room and it has a lot of character to it so I feel like when people stay in this room it's something that is cozy and it has a lot of interesting things to look at and full of antique and solid wood furniture which really fills my heart with joy. This bed is stunning you guys. I can't even put into words how it makes me feel when I look at that gorgeous bed and adding in this a little bit of of playfulness and kid things to the room helps to identify this room specifically for my son. There's something that I want to show you about this bed though. The base of the bed, the footboard of it, has just as much detail as the headboard does. And since I have it covered with the blanket and the trunk, I just wanted to make sure that it has the, the attention that it really deserves. And I also have a question for you guys about it. On the side rails, um, like where the feet of the bed are on the side rails, there's these weird metal pieces on the bottom that I cannot figure out what they are for. What are these for? What is that? I know that a long time ago they had rope beds, so I was wondering if maybe that was something to do with rope beds, but why are they so low to the ground like that? What is this? <laughs> Please help me figure out what those are. Another thing is I eventually plan to put a TV there. Um, you're probably wondering, where's the mirror? I want to put a TV in his room so that he can watch his cartoons in there, and something else I need to do is paint the doors and the trim in the room because right now it is a very yellowy color. And I just want to brighten it with a bright white eventually. I'm not in a huge hurry to do it. I also want to put in a desk here where the storage box is. He doesn't really need that much storage. His dressers have tons of space in them that's totally empty for even right now. So I want to get him a desk there eventually because we do homeschool and he loves to do puzzles. So that would be a great place to do puzzles. Thank you so much for watching today, you guys. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe and you will get to see lots more projects like this coming up. Bye.